It changed air travel forever. With its unmistakable hump, massive size, and record-breaking range, the Boeing 747 wasn't just another airplane. It was a revolution. It made flying more affordable, connected the world like never before, and became a symbol of global aviation for over 50 years. But how did it come to be, and why is it now fading from the skies? Welcome back to A Brief History, a series where I look at some of the most influential airplanes and airlines in aviation history. In this episode, I'll be taking a look at the queen of the skies, the Boeing 747. Before the 747, air travel was expensive and primarily reserved for business travelers or the wealthy. By the 1960s, airports were struggling with overcrowding as more people wanted to fly and airlines needed a larger aircraft to meet demand. Juan Tripp, the head of Pan Am, challenged Boeing to build something bigger and more efficient than anything before it. The result was the Boeing 747, the world's first wide-body jet, capable of carrying over 400 passengers at a time and doubling the capacity of existing jets. Joe Sutter, often called the father of the 747, was an aeronautical engineer who played a crucial role in shaping the future of commercial aviation. Born in Seattle in 1921, Sutter joined Boeing after serving in the U.S. Navy during World War II. He worked on several key projects, including the Boeing Dash 80, the prototype for the 707, and the 737, where he gained a reputation for solving complex engineering challenges. In the mid-1960s, as Boeing faced the challenge of designing a high-capacity jetliner, Sutter was chosen to lead the project despite already working on the 737. His ability to think outside of the box, challenge conventional wisdom, and manage large teams made him the ideal candidate. Unlike most of Boeing's top engineers who were focused on supersonic transport development, Sutter was tasked with creating something entirely different, a massive fuel-efficient aircraft that could transform air travel. Under his leadership, the 747's design evolved rapidly. Sutter and his team, known as the Incredibles, developed the iconic humpback design to accommodate a cockpit above a cargo bay, allowing the aircraft to serve as both passenger and freighter jets. His hands-on approach and problem-solving skills were instrumental in overcoming major technical challenges, including developing a new high-bypass engine and constructing the world's largest factory in Everett, Washington to build the massive jet. One of the biggest technological leaps introduced with the Boeing 747 was its use of high-bypass turbofan engines. Before the 747, most commercial jets relied on older turbojet designs, which were loud and inefficient. But to lift such a massive aircraft and make long-haul travel more economical, Boeing partnered with Pratt & Whitney to develop the JT-9D, one of the first high-bypass turbofan engines. This design significantly reduced fuel consumption while providing more thrust, making it possible for the 747 to carry hundreds of passengers over unprecedented distances. But power alone wasn't enough. The aircraft also needed to be incredibly safe. The 747 introduced a fail-safe structural design, meaning that if one part of the aircraft experienced a failure, there were built-in redundancies to keep it flying. It featured multiple hydraulic systems, reinforced wing structures, and an advanced electrical system designed to withstand malfunctions. This approach made the 747 one of the most safest and reliable aircraft of its time, setting new standards for large jet design that are still followed today. Of course, the most designing aspect of the 747's design wasn't just its safety or its engines. It was its sheer size. The 747 was the world's first wide-body airliner, featuring two aisles instead of one. This revolutionary cabin layout allowed airlines to dramatically increase passenger capacity while offering more space and comfort than ever before. Whether it was luxurious lounges in first class or the ability to pack hundreds of economy seats in, the wide-body concept changed air travel forever. The first Boeing 747 ever built rolled out of Boeing's massive Everett factory on September 30, 1968. It was an engineering marvel, twice the size of any existing jetliner, with a distinctive hump that would soon be one of the most recognizable silhouettes in aviation. The sheer scale of the project was unprecedented. Boeing had to construct the world's largest building by volume just to assemble it. But as impressive as the 747 looked on the ground, the real test was yet to come. Flight testing began on February 9, 1969, with Jack Waddle, Brian Weigel, and Jess Wallach at the controls. 
As the massive jet lifted off from Payne Field, it proved that something this large could not only fly but do so with remarkable stability. However, the testing phase wasn't without challenges. Engineers quickly discovered issues with the Pratt & Whitney JT-9D engines, which suffered from power surges during high thrust operations. The aircraft also experienced minor structural concerns, including unexpected flutter in the wings. But Boeing's team, led by Sutter, worked tirelessly to resolve these problems, reinforcing wing points and refining the engines to meet performance standards. After nearly a year of rigorous testing, the 747 was finally ready for commercial service. On January 22, 1970, Pan Am became the first airline to introduce the 747 to the world, operating its inaugural flight from New York to London. Excitement was at an all-time high. This was more than just another plane. It was a symbol of the future of air travel. Hundreds of passengers boarded what was then the largest commercial aircraft ever built, stepping into a new era of long-haul flying. However, the maiden flight didn't go exactly as planned. An engine issue forced Pan Am to swap to a backup aircraft. But once airborne, the 747 delivered on its promise, ushering in a new age of affordable mass air travel that would change the airline industry forever. The 747-100 quickly became the backbone of long-haul travel, with airlines around the world eager to take advantage of its unmatched capacity and range. Over its production run, Boeing delivered 167 of these first-generation jumbo jets, and they were adopted by some of the biggest names in aviation. Pan Am, the launch customer, built its global network around the 747-100, operating 25 of them on flagship routes across the Atlantic and Pacific. TWA also embraced the aircraft, using its 21 jets to expand transatlantic services. Meanwhile, Air France and British Airways utilized their 747-100 fleets to increase capacity on major international routes, while Japan Airlines took advantage of a special short-range variant, packing in high-density seating for busy domestic flights. For airlines, the 747-100 wasn't just about size, it was about flexibility. Its spacious cabin allowed for a mix of luxurious first-class lounges, high-density economy seating, and even innovative configurations like upstairs cocktail bars. This versatility made it the perfect aircraft for both premium travel and mass market expansion, setting a new standard for global connectivity. As the world's first wide-body airliner, the 747-100 proved that high-capacity long-haul flying was not only possible but essential for the future of commercial aviation. Despite the success of the 747-100, it wasn't a perfect aircraft. Airlines loved the capacity and range, but they quickly ran into a few limitations. The original JT-90 engines, while groundbreaking, had reliability issues and the aircraft's range wasn't quite enough for some of the longest haul routes airlines wanted to fly. Boeing knew that to keep the 747 competitive, they needed to address these concerns. Enter the 747-200. Introduced in 1971 as an improved, more powerful version of the original jumbo jet. The biggest upgrade was under the wings. Airlines now had the option to choose between more powerful and more reliable engines from Pratt & Whitney, General Electric, or Rolls-Royce, giving them flexibility based on their needs. These new engines boosted the aircraft's performance, increasing thrust and improving fuel efficiency. The 747-200B, the most common version, also came with a higher maximum takeoff weight, which meant it could carry more passengers, cargo, and fuel, ultimately extending its range. Boeing also introduced a dedicated freighter version, the 747-200F, which had strengthened floor and a massive nose cargo door, making it one of the most capable cargo airplanes ever built. This was a major move as the 747's size made it perfect for hauling oversized cargo, a role it still plays today. With these improvements, the 200 became the true workhorse of the skies, offering airlines the reliability and range they needed to expand their international networks even further. It solidified the 747's dominance, ensuring it remained the queen of long-haul travel for years to come. The 747 SP, introduced in 1976, was a shorter version of the 747 designed for ultra-long-haul flights. With a reduced fuselage and wings optimized for fuel efficiency, the SP could fly further than its predecessors, reaching over 6,000 nautical miles. This made it ideal for non-stop routes between distant cities like New York and Tokyo or Los Angeles and Sydney. However, the SP was a niche aircraft with only 45 units built, as airlines found that the smaller capacity didn't always justify the cost. 
Notable operators included Pan Am and Iran Air, with the aircraft also seeing use in the private and government sectors, including as a VIP transport for heads of state. The 747-300, introduced in 1983, was Boeing's response to the increasing demand for more passenger capacity without drastically increasing the aircraft's size. It featured a stretched fuselage, allowing for 20 more passengers and a slightly extended range compared to the 100. It was a popular choice for airlines looking to maximize capacity on high-demand routes. Airlines like Swissair, Lufthansa, and Air France operated the 300, using it primarily on European and transatlantic routes where seats were in high demand. The aircraft provided a balance between capacity and efficiency, making it a solid performer for many years. Part of the reason why the 300 wasn't as popular as other variants is because airlines knew what Boeing had in store. In 1989, Boeing introduced the 747-400, a major leap forward in both technology and efficiency. The 747-400 came with a completely redesigned cockpit featuring a glass cockpit that eliminated the need for a flight engineer, reducing crew costs and increasing operational efficiency. It also featured more fuel-efficient engines, advanced aerodynamics, and winglets, all of which allowed the 747-400 to fly longer distances and carry more passengers with less fuel. The development of the 747-400 was driven by the need for greater efficiency and performance in the evolving airline industry. Boeing focused on optimizing the aircraft's range, cutting down operating costs, and incorporating more advanced technology to stay ahead of its competitors. As a result, the 400 could fly over 7,000 nautical miles while carrying up to 600 passengers, making it ideal for long-haul international routes. This combination of size and efficiency made it a favorite among airlines looking to expand their global networks without significantly increasing operating costs. As for its use, the 400 was versatile, serving as both a passenger and cargo aircraft. For passenger service, airlines like Delta, KLM, British Airways, and more used the 747-400 on their busiest routes, where high capacity and long-range performance were critical. The spacious interior allowed airlines to configure the aircraft with multiple classes, including premium cabins for long-haul comfort. In the cargo world, the 400's larger cargo hold and higher payload capacity made it a go-to for transporting freight across the globe. Its ability to carry both passengers and cargo simultaneously made it a true workhorse, helping define international air travel for decades. Introduced in 2012, the 747-8 was a refinement of the classic design, offering improved fuel efficiency, a quieter cabin, and increased capacity. With a length of 250 feet, it became the longest passenger aircraft in the world, surpassing even the Airbus A380. However, despite its technological advancements, the 747-8 faced challenges as airlines increasingly turned to more fuel-efficient twin-engine jets for long-haul flights. The high operating costs of the 747 led to their gradual retirement from passenger service. Airlines found that newer, more fuel-efficient aircraft like the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350 could do the same job at a lower cost, and the 747's iconic four-engine design became a less practical option for many carriers. Despite this, the 747-400 still has a place in the skies, with Lufthansa continuing to operate it on select routes. For now, these aircraft remain a symbol of an era of air travel defined by grandeur and capability. The 747-8 continues to fly passengers with Korean Air Lufthansa and Air China, offering a combination of luxury, performance, and history on long-haul routes. But in 2023, Boeing announced the closure of the 747 production line, officially ending an era that spanned over 50 years. The 747 changed aviation forever, and though it may be retired from most passenger fleets, its legacy lives on in the skies and the hearts of aviation enthusiasts around the world. Thanks for watching this episode of A Brief History. I really do appreciate you watching and for the continued support on my videos. If you love aviation, this channel is surely the place to be. And I can't help but notice that nearly 60% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy my content, please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on A Brief History.